So the PlayStation Showcase for September 2021 is about to start. Apparently it's approximately 40 minutes long, and it is going to cover games coming out for the rest of the year and into 2022. If I recall correctly, it will cover first and third party titles. 40 minutes is pretty compact, all things considered, so it's a little bit difficult to be super exact in regards to predictions. When it comes to first party titles, I expect another trailer for Horizon Forbidden West. I expect probably Gran Turismo 7 because we haven't heard anything from that in a while. Similarly, I expect something from God of War. That would be really nice. But beyond those pretty safe guesses, I don't really have much else to add. Third party titles is even less predictable because, well, Tokyo Game Show is right around the corner and some Japanese publishers and developers might want to save their biggest and best games for Tokyo Game Show. However, I do think there's a good chance of Square Enix games showing up here, particularly Forspoken. I don't expect Final Fantasy 16 because Yoshi P has explained that he won't have anything new to show until probably after Tokyo Game Show. But maybe that was a red herring and he's out to surprise us. Who knows? If this showcase were a gigantic 90 minute blowout, then I would have a lot of predictions prepared, but 40 minutes makes things a little bit more uncertain. So I'm just gonna forget about predictions other than those safe guesses that I made earlier. And I'm just gonna watch the show and try to enjoy it, hopefully. So without any further ado, Let's watch. As you just saw, PlayStation held a pretty dense showcase the other day, coming in at 40 minutes in length, showing off some big titles that we can expect in the near future, both first and third party. I had some predictions beforehand that ended up being correct, but they were all pretty safe bets because 40 minutes isn't long enough to go really crazy on guesses. There were some notable absences like Final Fantasy 16, which was already stated to not be there though, Hogwarts Legacy, and basically anything from Capcom, like Pragmata, Dragon's Dogma 2, or even just Resident Evil Village DLC. Still, Sony managed to work in some pretty huge surprises and beefy updates to games we were already aware of. It was an overall solid event with some high highs and very few lows. The event kicked off in a similar fashion to last year's September show, with the announcement of a big new RPG. This time, however, it's not something from Square Enix. It's Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake from Aspire Media. For those who aren't familiar with them, Aspire is a video game developer and publisher that specializes mostly in porting games to different platforms. This includes iOS ports of the original KOTOR and Jade Empire, also from Bioware. But now, as we can see, they've moved on from simply porting games to full-on remaking them. It's actually a path quite similar to Bluepoint Games, who started off remastering games until they remade Shadow of the Colossus and Demon's Souls. The trailer is only a pre-rendered cutscene showing Revan, so no in-game footage was given, probably an indication that it's very early in development. I've seen rumors of this project some time ago, but it seemed too good to be true, so I honestly dismissed it. Shame on me, I guess. It is confirmed that KOTOR Remake will be a timed exclusive for the PS5, but it's unclear for how long. I assume one year, but it could be longer. I generally don't like the practice of timed exclusivity, but this is definitely still a big get for Sony, and will drive console sales a lot in the lead up to the game's release. It won't help much now because of the ongoing chip shortage, but in another year or so, it'll be more relevant. I hope the KOTOR remake sticks closely to the source material in terms of story and characters, but I also hope role-playing aspects are a bit more expanded on and closer to KOTOR 2. In terms of combat, I honestly expect them to either stick with the round-based D&D-inspired style of the original, 
or go all in on action combat that will play similarly to Fallen Order. I think it'll be one or the other. I would be shocked if it were anything else. Next up is an action RPG from Korean developer Shift Up, who, as far as I know, hasn't done a big console game before. But if this gameplay trailer is any indication of the true quality of the final product, then I don't think they have anything to worry about because Project Eve looks stellar. I'm a huge fan of action RPGs and character action games, and the Bayonetta and Nier Automata influence shown here is very, very clear to me. It's got the beautiful heroine in skin-tight clothing, it's got parrying, it's got slowdown mechanics, it's got dodges. What's not to love from this combat and style? If this is truly how the finished game looks and feels, I will enjoy it immensely. If there's a downside I can think of right now outside of that, I suppose it's the possibility of a criminally short length. I'm thinking sub six hours. Now that being said, I wouldn't necessarily mind that if replayability was high, and they usually are for this type of game. That's just a concern I have at the moment. I'm not saying it'll actually be that short. There is a chance it could be 30 hours long. I don't know. Either way, Project Eve does look great, and I'm very excited for it. After that, we have Forspoken from Square Enix, formerly known as Project Athia, which gave the impression that the game was several years off. But as it turns out, it's actually quite close. We got a more extensive look at gameplay, particularly lots of traversal and movement, and a good amount of combat. It honestly reminds me of Sucker Punch's infamous games, but this time in a fantasy setting, which is another topic because the story seems to basically be an isekai. Also, Amy Hennig is actually a co-writer, which is also cool to know. I'm glad Square Enix is actually doing something with the Luminous engine, because it seemed like a promising piece of software when Final Fantasy XV came out. It had some kinks to work out, sure, but it seemed quite dependable in terms of performance and general capabilities. Hopefully Forspoken does enough to allow the engine to flex its muscles a bit. It launches in Spring 2022, which was way earlier than anyone would have guessed back when the game was announced without a proper title. I'm pretty optimistic about the game and look forward to seeing more gameplay in the future, particularly about how the main character, Frey, becomes stronger as I don't think it's been confirmed that this game is or isn't an RPG of some sort. Then we got some Alan Wake Remastered footage, which is a game that hasn't been released on a PlayStation platform before, so that's really cool. It looks like a solid remastering job. Grand Theft Auto V showed up looking like Grand Theft Auto V. Nothing else to really say about that. Ghostwire Tokyo got a pretty beefy story and gameplay trailer, and it looks really interesting. I'm digging its weird cyber ghost aesthetic. And then there's a virtual Radiohead exhibition. Okay, I don't really know how to respond to that, but cool for them, I guess. Then Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy are revealed to be getting a remaster for PS5 and PC making them the third and fourth first-party Sony games to be ported to PC recently, after Days Gone and Horizon. Herman Holst showed up to finally lead us into the new stuff for first-party games, and the first thing we're shown is the Insomniac and Marvel logos back-to-back, -back, which led many people, including me, into believing that it was going to be Spider-Man 2. And it wasn't. We're shown the inside of a bar full of beaten up chumps and a gruff looking man in a flannel and cowboy hat sitting at the counter. We don't see his face, but when one thug pulls out a knife, well, you know what happens. Wolverine. Insomniac Games is making a fucking Wolverine game. I don't understand how they keep doing it. They knocked Spider-Man 1 and Miles Morales out of the park, and they were rewarded with the opportunity of making more Marvel games. The Insomniac Games Marvel Universe is now a thing, I guess. They just don't miss. I said it before in my review of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, but Sony managing to buy Insomniac for only $200 million is an absolute steal. Borderline robbery. 
Now, not so shocking is the lack of a release date or window. This game is probably years away. Maybe 2024 if we're lucky, or unlucky, depending on how you see it. Regardless, I'm glad to know it just exists. After that, we finally get new Gran Turismo 7 gameplay footage, and it looks beautiful. Shocker. It seems to boast a ton of everything. Cars, tracks, customization, and a general slickness in UI design, as many GT games have had. And the photo mode looks insane. There's so many options and ways to take a snapshot. I thought Ghost of Tsushima had the most robust photo mode I've ever seen, but GT7's is going to make that look like a disposable camera. There's just an incredible amount of content being shown off in this trailer, it's crazy. I'm not a Gran Turismo super fan by any stretch of the imagination, I typically don't like racing sims as much as I like arcadey racers, but this looks fantastic. Truly. And it'll be coming in March 2022, so it's not that far away. Next up, bookending Polyphony's upcoming game is another project from Insomniac. Yes, they are very, very busy. This trailer opens up in a way that made a lot of folks, again including me, instinctively guess that it was infamous, because no company logos popped up in the beginning. It just started with a shot of a grimy street corner getting electrocuted. Now granted, the electricity effect was yellowish, so that should have been a hint. But no, it wasn't infamous. A close-up of Peter Parker's Spider-Man suit confirmed that it was indeed the Spider-Man game we thought we were going to get when the Wolverine trailer started playing. It shows both Peter and Miles working together to tag-team some hapless thugs, while another character, Kraven, is narrating over the whole thing. And then... Venom pops up for a brief moment. It's a small teaser, but adequately builds up the hype. It seems like there's an implication that Venom might be playable, considering he responds to Kraven's wish for a worthy opponent, and it's his logo that closes out the trailer. The game will come out in 2023, which feels like a long time away, but I have a feeling that it'll be worth it. And finally, the showcase closes out with God of War Ragnarok, showing Kratos and a slightly older Atreus in a shocking amount of gameplay footage, way more than I thought we were ever going to get. The trailer just kept going and showing more and more, including a glimpse of Thor, who's looking pretty big-boned this time around, but as far as I know, that's probably more accurate to the mythology. There's a ton of other characters making an appearance here too, including Tyr, the Norse god of war, who was mentioned several times in the previous game, but never physically showed up until now. The trailer gleefully showed off a ton of combat, a lot of environments, and a hefty amount of plot. Fun fact and potential spoilers about Tyr though, he's shown having both of his hands, but according to mythology, he loses one of them to the wolf Fenrir so maybe the animal will come into play in the game. Guess we'll have to wait and see. But we don't yet know how long we'll be waiting for, because the trailer didn't come with a release date or window. Not even a year. When it was first announced, it was slated for this year, but obviously that's not happening. We're probably lucky if it even manages to stay within the boundaries of 2022. But I guess we'll see later. And that pretty much concludes the show. It was a solid event that had a lot of high-profile appearances and some gobsmacking surprises. There were a few things that were kinda disappointing or just plain annoying, like GTA V looking the same as it's always been since 2013, but otherwise, it was a dense 40 minutes filled with good stuff. For PlayStation 5 owners, there's a lot to look forward to over the next two years. And if you don't own one yet, that's completely fine. A lot of things shown here aren't releasing too soon. And hopefully this chip shortage will be over and done with by this time next year. And you don't have to fight tooth and nail just for the opportunity to order one. Fingers crossed. For now, we have our sights on Tokyo Game Show in just a couple weeks. Hopefully our friends in the Far East have some big titles to show off. 
Thank you for watching, and I'll see you around.